Russia's foreign ministry Sunday rejected a British claim the Kremlin is seeking to replace Ukraine's government with a pro-Moscow administration. And former Ukrainian lawmaker Yevgeny Murev is a potential candidate. Britain's Foreign Office Saturday also named several other Ukrainian politicians it said had links with Russian intelligence services. The Foreign Office said, quote, some of these have contact with Russian intelligence officers currently involved in the planning for an attack on Ukraine. The British government made the claim based on an intelligence assessment without providing evidence to back it up. It comes amid high tensions between Moscow and the West over Russia's designs on Ukraine and each side's increasing accusations. The other is planning provocations. Sustained gunfire rang out from military camps in Burkina Faso Sunday as mutinying soldiers demanded more support for their fight against Islamist militants and protesters ransacked the headquarters of President Rukhobori's political party. The government called for calm, denying speculation on social media that the army had seized power or detained Kabore. A spokesperson for the mutineers said they were demanding appropriate resources and training for the army in its fight against militants linked to al-Qaeda and Islamic State and the resignation of the army and intelligence chiefs. Frustration in the West African gold-producing country has grown in recent months over deteriorating security. The deaths of 49 military police in a militant attack in November prompted violent street protests calling for Kabore to step down. Islamic State claimed responsibility for a deadly attack Saturday in the western Afghan city of Herat, it said, in a post on Telegram on Sunday. At least six people were killed when a blast ripped through a minivan in the city, officials said. Since the Taliban took over in August, a series of blasts and attacks, some claimed by Islamic State, have taken place across Afghanistan. Meanwhile, a Taliban official said Sunday three days of talks with Western officials in Oslo were a step to legitimize the Afghan government. But now this type of uh, invitation and communication will help European community, U.S. or many other countries uh, to erase the wrong picture of uh, the Afghan government. Taliban delegate Shaflula Hassan made the comment after a first day of talks during which Taliban officials met women's rights activists and human rights defenders from Afghanistan and the Afghan diaspora. Ahead of the visit, Norwegian Foreign Minister Anakin Huffelt stressed the meetings were, quote, not a legitimation or recognition of the Taliban, end quote, and currently no foreign government has given them diplomatic recognition. Beijing city officials Sunday said all two million residents of a neighborhood where a small cluster of coronavirus cases was detected will be tested less than two weeks before the start of the Winter Olympics. China's cases constitute a tiny fraction of the massive surge in countries around the globe, with the highly contagious Omicron variant driving a fresh spike in infections. Still, multiple small outbreaks around China, including Beijing, have tested its strict zero-COVID policy, which authorities have pursued, even as the rest of the world has gradually reopened. Local authorities have identified a district in southern Beijing as the epicenter of a cluster with the number of cases in the capital totaling 43. Police fired water cannons and thick clouds of tear gas in Brussels Sunday to disperse protesters demonstrating against COVID-19 vaccinations and restrictions that aim to curb the fast-spreading Omicron variant. The protest drew tens of thousands of people, some traveling from France, Germany, and other countries to take part, and some had violent confrontations with police. 